Okay, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us on this very special day. I'm Brian McCalley. I'm the vice president of the plant here in Ravenswood. Uh, for those I haven't had the pleasure of meeting, I'm a veteran of the aluminum industry with over 25 years of experience. The best two and a half of it though, coming more, most recently here in Ravenswood. I've been in this role as vice president for a little over six months now. I'm honored and privileged to follow in the footsteps of a local legend here, Ravenswood's own Buddy Stemple. They are indeed big shoes to fill, folks. Lucky for us, I'm a size 14. <laughs> like my predecessor, though, I believe very strongly in community engagement and giving back into the community in which we work and live. Many of you have seen me out at community events. That trend's only going to continue as I look forward to a long and productive career here at Constellium Ravenswood and in keeping this plant and this community thriving. We're honored to have special guest speakers with us here today. Senator Joe Manchin, who has a special announcement he'll be sharing with us. Brian Anderson from the Department of Energy. Secretary Mitch Carmichael from the West Virginia Department of Economic Development. And Constellium CEO Jean-Marc Germain. I also want to thank our local community leaders for joining us and for their continued support of Constellium Ravenswood, including Delegate Westfall, Mayor Rader, Mayor Miller, and Commissioner Waybright, also Commissioner Morrison, JCDA Director Mark Whitley and Associate Director Megan Parsons, Dr. Tori Jackson, President of WVU in Parkersburg, Superintendent of Jackson County Schools William Hassefluk, Ara Hines with the Arch 2 Coalition, the United Steelworkers International and Local Representatives, including Mr. Brian Wedge, Buddy Malone from the local trades unions, state and local Chamber of Commerce members, representatives from the West Virginia Manufacturing Association. Thank you all for being here today. And a special welcome home to my coach, my mentor, and my friend, Buddy. The fearless leader of this facility for the past decade and the man who helped plant the seed, which has blossomed into what you're here about to hear more about today. It's great to see you again, coach. I offer our thanks to all of you who took time out of your day to come and share in this wonderful announcement. I believe that what you hear today will sustain this plant in Ravenswood for many generations to come. So without further ado, I'd like to turn things over to the Honorable Senator Joe Manchin. Well, thank you, Brian, and I, I uh, reiterate uh, my uh, Welcome to all of the people that have been mentioned here, all my friends and everything, and, and I see them. And it's good to be in your presence. And also uh, re-echo to John, uh, uh, to John Mark, uh, team you put together, uh, to Mitch, what he's been doing. We worked with him on many, many projects. To Brian, uh, uh, who understands energy as well as anyone in America, and if the White House only listened to him, we'd be a lot better off. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, to, uh, to so many, but to Buddy, uh, again, so many years we've been together and working on projects, and Buddy always had the enthusiasm. It's one thing to have a vision, but if you can't put enthusiasm with vision, nothing happens because no one else gets it. But when they see you so excited about something you know can happen, and Dick, you know what I'm talking about, and Carolyn and everybody here that's been so much involved in so many times, Buddy brought not only a vision to life, he gave you, basically, Glenn, you could see what he was thinking what could happen. And seeing this could be the premier, basically, building block for America right here. And I've always said that the United States of America has to be, to all of you workers and all of you that make it possible, these investments won't come unless there's a workforce to produce. We can want it all we want. I can say, oh, let's put money in West Virginia. But if you can't produce, it won't come here because they look at basically the output, what you've been able to do, the quality of products you make, the, the, uh, the way the industry depends on what you're making, the whole of the... Uh, when you look at the, uh, the advantages the United States has by having a building block here, what happened? When NAFTA came along back in the 80s and 90s, you heard the old NAFTA, and then it turned into now they call it the USMC, North American Free Trade Agreement, now it's USMC. We allowed a lot of things to leave America that never should have ever been considered to leave. The building blocks basically is your steel, your ability to make steel, your ability to do the things that we need, special products such as this, to do them here without depending on foreign supply chains. 
What happened with foreign supply chains? We have four countries of foreign concern. No matter what we do, and no matter how much you think diplomacy is going to make them part of us, they never have our values. Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran. They're not. You can still do business with them. Just don't do business on things we depend on and expect they're going to make, be there when you need them. And what Russia did with Ukraine and the war that started, the Ukrainian war, Russia used energy as a weapon. That's all. They very just simply used energy as a weapon. And when they weaponized that, they held our friends in the EU, our European friends, at hostage. They had it over their head. We couldn't even go to their defense. We weren't even there to help them because we weren't producing energy that we should be producing in America. I will tell you today, the United States of America is energy totally energy independent for the first time in 40 years. We're producing more energy today than ever in the history of the United States of America, more than anybody in the world. We're producing oil and gas more abundantly and better environmentally than any place in the world. And when you cut the United States down and your administration says we don't want to produce any fossil, then basically the world has a demand for fossil. They're going to get in the dirtiest places. To allow Venezuela back in the market is horrible. Venezuela produces oil, just extracting oil and getting oil to market, 80% more as far as detrimental to the environment and their emissions than any place in the world. Okay, and you have that situation on. Then we turned a blind eye to the ghost ships coming out of Iran. Iran's using all their resources basically to support terrorist operations. None of this makes sense because the hardcore environmentalists don't want us to produce anything in America. They want out of sight, out of mind. They talk about electric vehicles. We're going all over the world to look for electric, in the Congo and everywhere else, enslaving families to produce basically the critical minerals that are needed for this because we won't do it ourselves. We have the greatest deposits of lithium in the world and unable to get mining permits to do it. We're working on that now. So when I see, uh, when I was governor, I could see the, the, the things that we were capable of doing, but you have to have a willing partner. The government has to be your partner. And I've said this, in America, the whole success of our country has been, government was never intended to be your provider. It was intended to be your partner. And a good partnership wants you to succeed. And if you succeed, they're doing well, you're doing well, everyone's doing good. So when we put all this together to create some type of an incentive to do more and bring jobs back to America, it was done with a couple of bills that we worked on. But what I'm here, and I'll speak about that, but what I'm here today is to tell you that Castilium has been selected by the Department of Energy to begin an award negotiations for up to $75 million in federal funding to upgrade your cast houses. $75 million that basically the federal government So I talked, I got to shake hands with most of the workers here. You're going to be working for a long time. As long as you want to work, you're going to have a job because you all produce. That's it. $75 million federal investment is going to support the installation of low emission smart melt furnaces. And that's unbelievable to be done right here in West Virginia because of the production capability that we have. It maximizes recycled scrap intake. Most importantly, improves worker safety by introducing a hands-free casting process. So this is something that we've been talking about for a while. You've been able to show that you can do it. The technology is there. All we needed was the investment. We're not paying for it. I mean, it's got a lot more cost than that, I can assure you. But basically, when the federal government becomes your partner and takes some of your risk away, you're willing to jump out there as a company and invest your money. Because now you have a willing partner that says, hey, I, I got to make sure you succeed because I, I got my investments also. Uh, and it gets better. As the project Constellium will invest in new employee training, wellness center, provide financial and technical resources for local schools and universities, and add new on-site child care. That's pretty special. It really is to have child care here right on site. And I think that all companies now responsibly understand that's a great opportunity for them to keep their workers satisfied, happy, and secure that their kids are taken care of. That's the biggest part of it. I'm, pl I'm also pleased to announce that the minibus funding that we just stayed till all night the other night, <laughs> Friday night, we got out at 2.30, I think, by the time we got funding, we got done voting on it. But I don't know if they all knew that it included another $23 million for Castilian to renovate and reopen aluminum casting units. We had that in there, and that was an earmark that we put in there because you all told us you needed that, and it could increase your production, what you're doing. That was put in there, so that's going to be two. So we're talking a $100 million investment right here, right here.
and it really, I'll, I'll reiterate it because I can't say it enough. Finding a solid, workable uh, workforce that really cares about the job they do and the quality of work they do means everything. Uh, you can invest all the money you want to, but you can't invest in the worker if the worker doesn't want to work. But when you have a good job and you know it provides for your family, you can do what you need to do to improve the quality. My biggest concern with any workforce is it's a safe place to work. I don't believe any person should go to work in America or anywhere else in the world and not come home safe, and I'd expect to. So safety has been a big thing here. Buddy and I have talked about it for years and years and years, and I think that you all understand how important that is and know that something goes wrong, you got to be able to say, well, wait a minute, this is not right. we got to stop this because somebody's going to get hurt. And I hope you all feel that way. Um, but the commitment to West Virginia that Constellium has made now, it's going to be a lasting commitment, I think, and it's going to have a lot of rewards for all of us. Two bills basically made this happen. It's called the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill and the Inflation Reduction Act. Those two bills have been politicized to the point to where you don't know who's for what and who's against what and what's good and what's bad. And I can tell you, none of those bills would happen unless Democrats and Republicans work together. What happens in Washington, don't get caught up in this mess that we're in. It's just awful, and you shouldn't subscribe to it. Because if you want to blame, you know, there's blame to go around. If you're a Democrat and you want to blame Republicans, go ahead. If you're Republicans want to blame Democrats, go ahead. But the bottom line is, these don't happen unless we do come together eventually and look at these things. We pulled the bipartisan infrastructure bill out of the old BBB thing that was just horrendously too big. It was a wish list that would have tanked our economy. I believe so. I was the one vote that tanked it. And uh, <laughs> the Democrats weren't real happy with me on this vote, but I just thought this common sense, it wasn't about a Democrat or Republican. It didn't make sense to throw another three to six trillion dollars into the market after we already put 5.2 in. It had thrown us into a, 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 just a tailspin of a recession and it might have been a worldwide depression. We'd have thrown so much money to market, couldn't have handled it. So with that, we pulled out the bipartisan infrastructure bill because we haven't done, you know, our deferred maintenance on bridges, roads, and everything in between, and internet connectivity, things of that sort hadn't been done for the last 30 years. So we knew something had to be done there, and that's how that bill came about. The IRA, Inflation Reduction Act, came about after Ukraine, uh, basically, we killed the when I said, told the president I couldn't vote for it, and here's what I told him, I'm sitting in the White House. Can you imagine? I come from a town of about four or 500 people, any of us in your community, and you're sitting there, it's so surreal, you're sitting there, and the president's sitting there, and he wants you to come into the Oval Office, and then he'll take you upstairs to his living quarters, and that's when they really put the hit on you. And uh, we're, we're sitting there, and, and, uh, and we're talking, he said, Joe, I need this, this is my marquee bill, and, so, and everything, and I said, Mr. President, he grabs me. They always grab you by the arm. This is how they do it. Your country needs you. <laughs> Here I am in Farmington, West Virginia, the President of the United States, the most powerful person in the world, most powerful military, most powerful uh, uh, economy. And he's telling me, your country needs me. What the hell am I going to say? I'm thinking. <laughs> I grabbed his arm and said, Mr. President, the country needs you too. <laughs> and it needs us all. It needs both of us working together. And sir, this is too much. I said, this piece of legislation, which you say is your marquee, I said, I think what it'll do, um, I remember I'm, I'm a student of the old John Kennedy school of basically, that's not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. We all have to do something. You all should be saying, what can I do for Castilian to make it a better place to work and also bring more business? So I told him that, and I said, if we do this bill you're talking about, your IRA, uh, your BBB bill, you're going to change the psychic of the nation to how much more can my country do for me? People are waiting for the next check. And I said, sir, I wasn't raised that way. I don't believe that. I believe you have to have compassion to help people who need help, but you have to be able to make sure that they have, an, they have the incentive to work. So that's we came to that, and he didn't talk to me for three months. <laughs> and uh, then the, uh, rec, uh, the um, Ukraine war started, and wep, uh, energy was weaponized, and we weren't producing, so we were able to write a piece of legislation that was able to help. And it was my Republican friends who worked with me for five years, even though they didn't vote for it at the end, it was because of their input and all of us working together for so long, I knew what we needed to do and what we all agreed on. It was the craziness of how Washington works. It was the, it was the reconciliation, which is a crazy rule in the law of how we do things, that they weren't able to because it was a party line vote and it was just horrible. But anyway, two pieces of legislation have given us opportunities of investment. And I was, tell, I was telling John, I said, uh, 
I'll never forget, I was, after the bill passed, the IRA bill passed, I was overseas for an energy conference, and Macron, uh, President Macron from, from uh, France was there, and so wasn't uh, uh, Schultz, Chancellor Schultz from Germany. And uh, President Macron came to me like a bandy rooster. I saw him coming across the room, <laughs> and he beelined it to me, because he said, you wrote that bill, you're killing my country, you did this and I said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I said, Mr. President, listen, I can assure you, we, we negotiated, we worked on that for about three months, me and my staff, and I said, not one time did we ever talk about how, what can we do to hurt our allies. We were ashamed that we couldn't help you when you needed help because we didn't have the energy to give you. So we had to start producing. And, uh, and with that, I said, sir, you've been using a tax, a carbon tax. They've been for two decades probably, right, John? Mm -hmm. Every bit of that. And so they, they basically charge you whatever it costs to make this table, however, however much carbon was concentrated in making this table, there would be a carbon price or carbon tax. Anything you used, they won fees on everything produced, correct? Mm -hmm. But what happened, they would take that tax and they would use it for their social. They never used it to incentivize to basically help the climate. But they call it a climate. It was all about climate. And I said, if you're going to help the climate, then you have to incentivize people to basically take some risk. And the only way you can incentivize someone to take a risk in a private sector or a private company is to make sure they don't lose money or at least they see a pathway forward. So with that, with that being, a, that's okay, Dick. Don't worry about it. They, they, they go off all the time. They go off, and and so we told them that. And I said, the difference is we use the incentives. We use the carrot and use the stick, and that's the difference. So anytime you want someone to do something you think it needs to be done, give them an incentive to do it. Don't find them and and say you're going to basically charge them extra fees and this and that. They won't do it. They'll just sit down and say, I'll do nothing. And now we have to bring all these back to America. So that's what we're trying to do. But I can only tell you that I am so proud of what's been done here. Because I will tell you all this. You give me bra bragging rights in Washington or anywhere I go in the country around the world. I've had bragging rights as far as West Virginia workers. I said, well, I'll produce anybody. We can outwork them. I can produce them. We can outthink them. We can outmaneuver. We can do whatever if you give us the opportunity and the flexibility to do it. You can't put, you can't put uh, strangulation as far as regulations on top where we can't do common sense things. So the feedback, that's what we're really working on now to try to make sure that the common sense will prevail. Uh, so for me, as I, as I'm, I, got eight, I got how many more months? Seven months maybe, eight months or whatever, uh, to continue to do what I've been doing is bragging about West Virginia and trying to produce the best I can. And I truly never looked at this as a, as a political job, even though politics is about ruining the day, and it's ruining the day too. But uh, we've got to change. The how you're changing is showing what you're going to do here. The investment we're making basically gives us a chance to do more investments. And Mitch, we've talked about that. There's some other things we're working on. More investments have come to our state than ever before in our history at one time. We've got more people interested in coming to West Virginia. And also, we put an extra 10% tax incentive if you come to a state that has been energy or fossil dependent, and now you're bringing new technology, such as form energy, and, and now we got Berkshire Hathaway right next door and this and that. These things are happening because we've given them incentives to come. They're still investing 80 to 70 or 80 percent of the money, taking their risk. We're in it with them also, and I can tell you we're going to have a lot of good things coming. But anyway, on behalf of a grateful state and a grateful nation, this is probably one of the better investments that we could ever make because I know it's going to be a return on investment. And that $100 million is coming very quickly. You're going to have to prove and show the value of that, and I know you will. And I know because of these workers that will happen. So I'm proud to be a United States Senator for the state of West Virginia representing this great state. I think we've got a lot of future left ahead of us now because they're going to be watching what we do with it. So to all of you, thank you. Thank you for a job well done. To all of the management here, especially to the workers, God, thank all of you. If it wasn't for you, it wouldn't have happened. God bless. Oh, you were? All right. Brian Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Brian Anderson. Well, Senator, thank you so much for the remarks. And Constellium, thank you for your partnership. I'm Brian Anderson. I'm a graduate of Ripley High School. Uh, yeah, <laughs> go Vikings. Um, but I'll tell a little story. In 19, 
was it, 1956. My grandfather started working here, and those of you know that the plant opened in 1957. Um, if you could fast forward from 1956 to today, given that I have a few cousins working here at the plant, my family spans 69 of the 68 years that this, plant, that this plant's been in operation. But in 1968, when Kaiser Aluminum decided at this site to build the world's largest aluminum smelter, it was at the cutting edge of innovation. Not only was it the world's largest, but it was the most up-to-date. And so it's really exciting to see Constellium partnering with the Department of Energy and investing in this site to, to move it forward as the first smart melt furnace uh, in the United States. So my personal history actually goes even beyond uh, my grandfather. When I was four years old, my babysitter's husband worked the night shift here and would drive from Reedy, West Virginia, and to be more exact, he drove from Grace Community 45 minutes every day to work at this plant. That illustrates the fact that anchor facilities, anchor plants, anchor manufacturing, like here at Constellium, not only affects the very local region, but it is an anchor to the economy of the entire region. And so again, to see Constellium partnering with the Department of Energy to invest here uh, is really exciting today. Fast forward 30 years ago, this month, I interviewed for my first job here in this building at Constellium. And I started the day after I turned 16 years old uh, working here on the hotline. I worked here for three years uh, during high school and during summers in college, the hotline, the cold, roll, cold rolling and annealing. And I got my first taste of what true American manufacturing looks like those 30 years ago. So now, fast forward three years ago, the president asked me uh, to lead an initiative called the Interagency Working Group on Coal and Power Plant Communities and Economic Revitalization. And our goal is to make sure that we're investing in energy communities, partnering with Congress. And Senator, thank you so much for your leadership on the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law and the Inflation Reduction Act, because it has given us the tools to make sure that we're investing in America's energy communities like all across West Virginia. So last week, I had the pleasure, I was in, in Golden, Colorado, and meeting with some energy community leaders in Colorado and Wyoming and Utah. But I got the pleasure to announce a $129 million solar project in, King, in, uh, in Nicholas County. We've also been working certainly with the state of West Virginia and Mitch Carmichael's office and the governor on all the other manufacturing investments, like in, in Weirton. Between the Boston Metals Project, the Department of Energy is investing in the 40209 program, which is manufacturing in energy communities, uh, to Forum Energy. So we've done, we've done Ravenswood to Richwood, we've done Weirton, and I need to get to Welch. Yeah. So the next thing is, <laughs> I, I, I'm glad you guys get that reference, because we are on the cusp of making sure that American manufacturing can come back, investing in our energy communities so that as we do decrease our reliance on coal in the United States, we are investing in those communities and not leaving a single one behind. And that is the mandate that I was given. I also sit in the part of the Department of Energy uh, called the Office of Infrastructure, and this is where we are investing in things like the hydrogen hubs in this project and uh, many other projects across the manufacturing energy supply chain, including a tax credit called 48C, where $4 billion of tax credit is going to go to energy communities leveraging about $12 billion of new, new investments, again, in energy communities. And tomorrow we have an event in Charleston to highlight those opportunities for, uh, for West Virginia. But more importantly and more you know, prevalent today, we are announcing across the Department of Energy, the Secretary is in Middletown, Ohio, the my undersecretary, my boss, he is in, uh, in Indiana, and we're announcing $6 billion of federal funding uh, in this program uh, in the Industrial Decarbonization, Industrial Demonstrations Program. That $6 billion is across 33 projects, including the one right here at Constellium, leveraging over $20 billion of new investment in manufacturing, marking the single largest investment in industrial decarbonization in this country's history. Now, one thing to really note there is the federal government's investing $6 billion, but industries and industries making up the rest to make that $20 billion. It is absolutely a partnership. It's a partnership across uh, the federal government with the Congress. It's a partnership from the federal government to the state government. And then obviously it takes the industry investment. And so thank you Constellium for embarking on this project in partnership with the Department of Energy. We're really excited to, to move this forward. And so these projects in the industrial de demonstration program are, 
are in aluminum, they're in steel, they're in cement, they're in the chemical sector, all in reinvesting in our nation's manufacturing to make sure that we can reshore the manufacturing as the Senator talked about. So again, it is certainly my pleasure uh, to be here today. I jumped at the chance to represent the Department of Energy here at Constellium, uh, and, and it's a really exciting day for American manufacturing and for Ravenswood and, and Jackson County. So thank you very much, and, and really exciting to embark on this journey. <laughs> well, thank you for the introduction, Brian. <laughs> it is a pleasure to be with you, and my name is Mitch Carmichael. I'm the Cabinet Secretary for Economic Development in West Virginia, and I, like Brian, I am a product of uh, Jackson County, and it feels so good to look around this room and see uh, what is occurring here in our uh, county. Uh, Senator Manchin, you have driven this uh, uh, from the national level, and we thank you for the public service that you have performed uh, for so many years, and you've been a great asset to our state, our nation, our world, and our, particularly this community, so thank you. And for Brian uh, Anderson, who is a product of Jackson County, and it means so much uh, to have a role now in validating the past, because everything you've done here from 1957 forward is a testament to what can occur in West Virginia. And this also confirms and validates the future of this plant and of our community and of the workers. And uh, you know, whenever I get an opportunity to, to speak about this plant, or particularly Jackson County, I'm often uh, reminded of my father who worked here. Brian, I couldn't get a job here. I tried and tried and tried. <laughs> but I did get a job on the railroad and was able to cut weeds <laughs> out here. But, you know, my dad, my father worked here, and I, and I often bring the badge that he wore uh, for so many years in this plant, over 30-some years, and it's uh, badge number 378. And, uh, yeah, and it's... Uh, they would, you know, print the aluminum badges and... Uh, and the workers would wear those very proudly. And uh, that's what's occurring here. This area now will be the world's low carbon, green energy, aerospace hub. When you think about everything that's happening at Constellium, Senator Jeffries wrote the letter to Warren Buffett at Berkshire Hathaway that helped them locate here in, our, uh, in this area with what was formerly the uh, uh, smelting area. Now, you see what's occurring in this state and in this nation, and it just feels so good to be a part of this and to look out and see you workers and know you're, you make us so proud. Uh, Senator Manchin referred to it. This is a Bureau of L U.S. Labor Statistics data point. Many people aren't aware of this, but as you brag on West Virginia throughout the world, this state, our workers, by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics data point, has the most loyal manufacturing workers in America. The most loyal. So when we, we will, you will make this plant shine and it will be uh, such a great testament to the workers and the workforce and what's occurring in our county and our state and our nation. And thank you for all that you do here. Thank you, Senator Manchin, Brian, uh, Brian Anderson, and then you'll hear from uh, the, uh, the president and CEO of the entire Constellium operation, who I think has some good data points about why this plant is so, uh, so advanced and so uh, profitable. So again, thank you, congratulations, and uh, let's make everyone proud as we continue to produce the world's best products out of this facility in Jackson County. Thank you. I gotta tell you a good story. I didn't know this young man way, way back, but in 1982, I got elected to the House of Delegates. His father, old Bill, Bill Carmichael, <laughs> the most beautiful human being you ever met. First of all, I didn't know many Republicans back then because everybody said they were Democrat. Now everybody's a Republican. It makes no difference. But old Bill, he had come out of the labor force, and he smoked a pipe, and he spoke very, very soft and very gentle. And I, so I really wanted to get to know this guy because he was he's just an attraction. So I said, Bill, explain. He's been here for a while. I said, explain it. He said, no, no problem, Joe. He says, 
He said, why don't you join our card game tonight, and we'll teach you a little bit. And show you how. <laughs> he took every penny I had. <laughs> he taught me all right. He taught me never to play cards, especially poker with Bill Carmine. <laughs> but, but he's a product of him. He's a good man because he had a good father. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a tough slate of speakers to follow, and uh, I feel a little bit embarrassed that it feels like I'm the only one who hasn't worked at Ravenswood. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, thank you so much, uh, Senator Manchin, Secretary Carmichael, Brian Anderson. Thank you so much for your support, your kind words, and your actions, because you did deliver for uh, West Virginia and Constellium. So thank you so much. Um, I'm always reminded in events like these um, of what makes us strong, and it's really the people. We've got a wonderful plant here, but it's really the people that make it work, that make it uh, perform, and uh, I'm very proud that this community of uh, workers has been able to achieve such great results and put us in a place where we can today announce this fantastic investment that uh, the administration, the, the US government, is the uh, Department of Energy is making alongside us. So thank you very much. I'd like to go back in time, uh, if you allow me, maybe one year ago, when I was invited to the White House to take part in a round table about the decarbonization of uh, hard to abate industries. And I gave a little speech there uh, to highlight the critical role of public funding, because as Senator Manchin said, and Brian Anderson said, and Secretary Carmichael said, these investments are hard to make, they are hard to justify. We know that we want to have a decarbonized future, but from here to there is very expensive. And the incentives we get are the things that are allowing us to do it now. So here we are today, uh, we've been selected uh, for this uh, investment, that's wonderful, and I like to think that my little speech made a difference. <laughs> Most likely, I think, Senator Manchin, you must have nudged us a little bit over the final hurdle, so thank you so much. Uh, so a year later, here we are, we've got this major uh, uh, announcement that we can make. For those of you who did not read the 200-page application, font, 11, font size 11, I think, uh, we are planning to replace three of our casting centers, which have become obsolete, uh, by two new uh, modern uh, casting centers, smart melt uh, technology, that will allow us to decarbonize. First, we will achieve a 30% reduction in uh, uh, CO2 emissions. And second, when clean hydrogen is available to us, we will be able to get to 100% uh, reduction in CO2 emissions from these uh, casting centers. So that's really wonderful, and uh, thank you very much for being part of that, uh, the Region Clean Hydrogen Hub. We just can't wait for it to become a, a reality and supply the hydrogen we need uh, to make our uh, plants uh, much less carbon intensive. In addition to decarbonization, we'll get plenty of benefits. The first one is uh, safety, state-of-the-art technology, uh, much safer operations. Senator Manchin, who talked about the importance of safety as a manufacturing company, that's the first objective we have, making sure we are safe. We're very proud of our safety performance, and actually, when you look at it, statistically, you're five times safer working in our plants, you're five times less likely working in our plants to have an accident than just going about your daily lives in the other 16 hours of your day. That is a fact. Yeah. We are still not happy with that performance, and that's why we're continuing to invest in, um, in a better safety performance. I'm making this point because it's really important. People have sometimes an outdated vision of manufacturing as a dangerous place where you expose yourself to dangers. Yes, it can be dangerous, but we have all the processes and all the behaviors to make sure we're actually much safer in the plant than outside. So please join us. We need workers as well as investment. Uh, the other thing it will do is, obviously, um, we get more productive with new technology. We also will be able to increase the amount of recycling we'll do, and we'll be able to increase the amount of production out of our cast houses. And when you think about the next 60 years of this uh, plant, 
which undoubtedly will come, this is helping us strengthen our industrial base by having a plant that is much less dependent on external sources of metal. So that's also very, very important to us. This is a foundational uh, investment in the future of the plant. So uh, very, very excited to do all these things. In addition to uh, the quality, the productivity, the safety, the uh, uh, independence, what we'll do also is be able to contribute more significantly to the community. And we were very, uh, very pleased uh, to have um, included in our application a community benefit plan that is quite extensive. We touched on uh, some of the uh, topics here when we talked about the child care center, uh, the uh, uh, educational in investments we're doing. So we plan to continue to give back, but as we're giving back, we hope also we are going to be getting advantage from these investments as well because we want to attract more people. And one, uh, if you look at this uh, assembly, we've got quite a few women, but not, a, not enough. And we do hope that uh, between the enhanced safety, the child care center, and all our other activities, we'll be able to bring in more female talent into our uh, community. So fantastic project, but it wouldn't have happened without the great work and the great support of many, many, many people. A lot of you are represented in this room, but not, uh, uh, but many, many more that couldn't be with us today. So I want to thank uh, a few people here. I first want to start with uh, thanking the uh, USW and our local unions. They are represented by Brian Wedge. And raise your hand. And Buddy Malone, I saw Buddy a bit earlier. Buddy, where are you? Here, thank you so much. Um, I want also to thank the uh, team that has worked uh, tirelessly on this 200-page uh, application. Uh, Adam Caswell, where are you, Adam? Here. <laughs> Fania Camarena, say hello. And Fania, you may be one of the first users of the Child Care Center. Congratulations <laughs> on getting this award and getting the baby. <laughs> um, Teresa Kearns, where is Teresa? Everybody knows her, thank you. Delphine Coker, yes, you didn't know I would say that, thank you. And obviously, Buddy, who, without you, nothing would have happened, thank you. So Brian, Brian now has the easy job to deliver, thank you. <laughs> To conclude, I'm very grateful to the administration, uh, the Department of uh, Energy, and to you, Senator Manchin, for uh, not only your understanding, your trust, but also supporting us through the process, not only of this project, but Senator Manchin, you've been uh, associated with this plan for more than two decades. Uh, you've uh, helped us through uh, thick and skin, uh, and um, I think this place wouldn't be what it is without the support of you. Uh, Senator Manchin. So thank you very much. This is much appreciated. And as uh, I guess we will not know what you plan to do after uh, <laughs> 2024 is over, uh, but we certainly hope you will continue in one shape or form to uh, promote the American values that make this place so special. Thank you so much. And now I would like to invite you, I guess, for a tour of the cast house. Thank you so much, everybody. Right.